There are a lot of German people who say, I want to do something which is a little bit different. Football is what everybody does, and I don't want to do what everybody does. I want to do something a little bit different. And certainly cricket is different, you know? Sometimes if you work in a company, and I've worked in companies in the past, you know, you go to work, you do your eight hours or your 10 hours a day, and you go home, and you can turn off, and you can maybe forget it because it's not your lifeblood. But if it's sport, and it's your sport, it's very difficult to switch off because it becomes part of you. Hi, my dear listeners. Welcome back. This is Inspire Someone today. And we have one more Inspirer joining us on this show. Joining us today is the CEO of German Cricket, Deutsche Cricket Club. And Brian is joining us representing Cricket Germany and talk to us about Cricket in Germany. Brian, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. So Brian, like I said in my intro, you don't necessarily associate European countries with cricket and there's a big interest for the game in Germany and you're leading the charge out there. Tell us a bit more about this particular interesting piece that is getting started in Europe and Germany in particular. Well, when I came to Germany 26 years ago from, from the UK, I didn't think there would be cricket here either. So I'd lived here for two years before I even considered the opportunity to play cricket and I found a, a cricket club here. So I'm fully aware that cricket fans around the world don't connect cricket and Germany together and people in Germany don't see cricket as a major sport. Um, they've lost contact to it over the decades. It used to be relatively big here about a hundred years ago, um, but it faded into more or less non-existence. And now it's, it's growing again and growing quite quickly, probably quicker than, than most other sports in Germany and, um, and probably countries around the world as well. And what does it mean for something like this for you to kind of take charge of it and set it up when, like you said, it's become non-existent and take it forward? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I don't take absolute control. I mean, German cricket is, is, is a lot of people. Obviously, the, the CEO is the person that brings things together, but it's a lot of people who are, who are growing cricket. And for, for myself as an Englishman and a, and a cricket fanatic my whole life, um, it's an honor to try and do something which is completely off the radar. And that is to bring, you know, my favorite sport and uh, my favorite pastime to a country that doesn't know much about it. It's, um, you know, it, it has its uh, challenges, of course, but it's, it's a pleasure to try and convince the Germans that they should play our sport. Well, as fascinating as it is to listen that the game is expanding into the nooks and corners of the world. And you did mention about taking the game to a place where it's much of a mainstream. And there's so much of relevance to business versus sport, which is in this particular case, cricket in Germany is like an underdog to football. But I can't relate to any other game to Germany than football. So from that con context, being, a, being an underdog, how difficult it is to convince people to embrace a game outside of what the uh, national sport is? Well, I, I would say it's probably similar to football in India, to be honest. If I speak to an Indian, I, I know there are people in India who enjoy football and have maybe a favourite team in, in Spain or in England. You know, I see so many Indians wearing Manchester United shirts or things like that. But it's, it's similar because over the last, let's say, 50 or 60 years with the invention, obviously, of television and then the internet, sports have established themselves in specific countries. So football totally dominates Germany in the same way that cricket totally dominates India. I guarantee you that an Indian person I meet here in Germany is a cricket fan. And it's often the same here that everybody is interested in football. I mean, and I love football as well. I'm a big Borussia Dortmund fan. And if I'm not Borussia Dortmund, I'm with friends from Bayern Munich or Schalke or, or some of the other sports. Cricket in or cricket in Germany and every other sport in Germany suffers because football is so big. Um, even the mm -hmm. second and third biggest sports in Germany, which are probably handball or ice hockey, they suffer because there's not enough spectators, there's not enough money in the sports, there's not enough sponsors to grow the game because everything is always in the shadow of football. So that is, is, is a big challenge. 
But on the other hand, it's an opportunity because there are a lot of German people who say, I want to do something which is a little bit different. Football is what everybody does. And I don't want to do what everybody does. I want to do something a little bit different. And certainly cricket is different, you know. So, but it's, it's, it's very interesting to speak to Germans and, and tell them how big cricket is. A few weeks ago, somebody was uh, contacted me and said, I've just seen who the, the 100 best paid sportsmen are in the world. And it's obviously it's, you know, Ronaldo and Messi and the Formula One drivers, but somewhere on the list was Virat Kohli and go to a German person and say, Virat Kohli or Sachin Tendulkar. They haven't got a clue. They haven't got a clue who these people are. So they're always surprised at how big cricket is, obviously, outside of Germany. No, that's so very true. The globalization and the advent of uh, television and internet has only made it easier for all of the sports to have a global footprint. And you did make a very valid point. It, it makes it a little bit more difficult as well, because most people have chosen their favorite sport. So most German people are mm -hmm. already football fans. They watch all of the football Bundesliga games. And of course, we don't have so much time these days. And the same in India. People are cricket fans. They've got their favorite IPL team and their favorite players. And there's not much room for them to take on other sports. So we're a little bit late, you know, 50 or 60 years late in terms of introducing cricket. But there is a market out there. And we're, we're, we're obviously we're trying to find that all of the time. That's a great point. Given so many things, so many uh, variables playing against you, the market, it's not the chosen sport, all of it. How easy or difficult it is for you to impress upon the investors, impress upon the authorities to bet on this game and make this as a sport that many Germans can play. So what's, what's the thinking behind that? Well, let, let's talk about the authorities first, because I think that's the most important point for us is to get the German government on board and the German sports authorities, which is something that's happened over the last two or three years. Um, they are interested in German cricket because they see a big opportunity to integrate foreign people into German culture. So there's been a, an incredible amount of immigration from Afghanistan, India, Pakistan, where obviously cricket is part of the culture. They've come to this country. These people need to become happy in this country. They need to feel settled. And cricket gives them an opportunity to feel at home, um, to give them sport and the exercise and the health benefits of obviously playing a sport. And the German government or the German sports authorities are interested in this. They also see growth. And whereas maybe five or six years ago, cricket was just another sport that nobody else had heard of, played by a few people. Now it's played by thousands of people in Germany and, and they see a big potential. We're at the beginning of that journey, but it's a, it's a very interesting journey and we've, we've got a lot of interest. In terms of finance and sponsorship, this is something that, again, we're starting to work on. We're starting to see that there is a potential for German cricket, commercial benefit for sponsors. You may have seen, for example, the European Cricket League which is a league that's run by a, an investor who actually comes out of Germany, a former German international cricketer, who's invested in, in a platform for streaming and showing cricket from Europe, but specifically also from, from Germany, which is where it all started out. And this is gaining a lot of traction, a lot of interest all over the world. So, you know, we've had tournaments that have taken place in Germany that have got viewership into the millions. You know, people watching, for example, in India on fan code, Thousands and thousands, millions of people watching cricket taking place in Germany. Um, and, and slowly there's becoming a, a fan base. It might be a small fan base, but there is a fan base for German and European cricket at the moment. We'll be back after a quick break. Leadership, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starfleet Leadership Academy. It's ongoing mission to develop leaders through Star Trek. To boldly go where no podcast has gone before. A leadership development podcast told through the lens of Star Trek. The Starfleet Leadership Academy. Available everywhere you listen to podcasts. Well, that's music to ears. And in lot many ways, Brian, the way I look at it is it's making of a startup into a unicorn. 
similar challenges to kind of get your invest investors convinced, get your target market, and then kind of spread the wings. So, if you were to kind of draw that parallel of German cricket to a startup kind of an environment, give us a thing or two about how did you go about convincing the public to embrace a sport like this, and what what were some of the things that German cricket had to do in terms of change management? Well, we're changing at the moment. Um... Or we have done over the last two or three years. So last year, uh, during the, the the Corona lockdown, we, together with the ICC, developed a new strategy, which sharpened our senses for exactly what we need to do to grow cricket. We must be very clear here: cricket in Germany will never be bigger than football in Germany. Certainly not in our lifetime. In the same way that football will never be bigger than cricket in in India. What we want to do is we want to get bigger. We want to get more children playing cricket. We want to get more women and girls playing cricket, and we want to get more Germans playing cricket. So, you know, we like most cricket countries around the world. Um, we are reliant on immigration. So, I have lots of Indian and Pakistani friends who who play around the country, um, and it's easy for us. It's let's say the the, the low hanging fruit on the tree that we can do that to set up clubs. We've got to get more Germans playing cricket. We've got to get more children playing cricket because maybe the immigration will stop or slow down in 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 future years. So we're looking at that. We're developing programs. The ICC is very good at coming up with ideas. For example, the ICC has got a program called Creo, which is spelled C R and then three I's for the wickets and an O, which is an entry level program to get German children or children around the world to play cricket for the first time with plastic equipment and, and softballs to gain a lifelong passion for cricket. So we have to invest our time and our energy in that and hope that maybe in five or ten years we will have a steady stream of players who've learned the game here in Germany. That's the only way that we can sustain ourselves as a sport, you know, in the future, um, you know, and, and obviously make sure that cricket is there when, when we are no longer there. So very true. That kind of takes me to my next question, which is about importance of having a vision. So what you're trying to do is not something that you do for the next couple of years and then lo and behold, you see your uh, results coming through. So how important it is to see things from a long-term perspective and how do you go about making some of those course corrections along the way? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very difficult because obviously it's a very fast moving job. Um, and very often we're stuck in, in what is happening on our desk today and all of those, you know, problems that we have to deal with on a daily basis. But we, we try through this whole strategy concept that we've done with the ICC, um, to think what cricket in Germany will be like in five years time. So we hope that in five years time, for example, there will be at least double the amount of women playing cricket. There will be kids playing in youth leagues, softball and hardball leagues in every big city in Germany. There will be opportunities for, for Germans to play cricket, social cricket, serious cricket. Obviously, the strength and, um, and performance of our national teams is important, you know, because we're very ambitious there. Because in a country like Germany, if our national team is successful, that will bring fans and and new cricket players as well, because they'll want to be part of something which is successful. So it's very difficult to juggle all of these ideas at the same time and deal with the daily tasks, you know, that come in. I'll give you an example. Today is Monday. I wasn't in the office on Friday. Come into all the emails, dealing with all of the, the, the problems that have come up over the weekend or the little questions that come in, but also thinking about big things. You know, for next month, for example, we've got some T20 internationals um, which we've got to organize, but also thinking about development programs that are, you know, not just this month and this year, but also going forward in, into the future and balancing that and juggling that is, is, is very difficult, but, but challenging and, 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 and very interesting at the same time. That's it all. Ask for a CEO, nevertheless, right? Keeping eye on the current day to day stuff at the same time, focus on the long term. Yeah. Which is something, again, if you're talking about change management, something that we have done. If you go back to the structure of German cricket three or four years ago, we had a very active board who were volunteers doing a lot of work, creating ideas. And I was the only paid employee working from home, basically in my spare bedroom. Um, this has changed over the years. We still have an active board. 
but we now have employees. We're in the process this week of hiring three people on part-time contracts to develop cricket in different parts of Germany. Uh, their, their remit will be to, to get development programs up and running for small children and women so that we get, you know, a steady flow of new players. Um, you know, so that has changed. So from, you know, one employee to what will be, um, six employees at the end of this month, um, is a big development. Six, six employees is still very small. We know that. Um, and people, these, all of these employees do more than they probably should. You know, they have a working contract. And it's my job, obviously, to make sure that we get as much development out of them. And that often means these people sacrificing more hours than they're paid to do. But it's cricket, it's passion, it's sport, it's hobby. It's, 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 it's a wonderful thing as well. And Brian, I'm sure there are days where you kind of throw everything saying that this is not on. This is not something that I signed up to do. Are there days that you feel frustrated with how things are and how do you kind of overcome those frustrations? How do you keep yourself motivated? I, I would say from a different perspective, I would say there are no days where I don't feel like that. Um, because super, you know, <laughs> we, it, it's part of the job. It's obviously we're trying to, to, to change the world in a way. Um, with very few resources, few financial resources, human resources, and our targets are probably too ambitious for, for what we actually have to deal with. The potential of cricket in Germany is, is huge. I mean, really huge. And dealing with those challenges on a daily basis can be frustrating. It, it, it's a lot of fun on the one hand, but on the other hand, yeah, there's so many stones are put in your way, whether that's a lack of resources or things not developing, going to schools and realizing that maybe it's very difficult to get German children to choose cricket above football or handball or any of the other sports. So there's, you know, it, it's a little bit like two steps forward and one step back all the time. Um, and I think we all feel that all of, all of, all of our volunteers feel like that. It's hard work, but we do it because we love it. And that's the difference between working in a sports federation and working in a company. Sometimes if you work in a company and I've worked in companies in the past, you know, you go to work, you do your eight hours or your 10 hours a day and you go home and you can turn off and you can maybe forget it because it's not your lifeblood. But if it's sport and it's your sport, it's very difficult to switch off because it becomes part of you. And that's a great uh, analogy that you provide. One is you made sport as your passion. So any hurdle that come your way, you kind of figure out a way to kind of overcome the hurdle or stay motivated to do that. On the other hand, when you're in the corporation, which many of our listeners who are listening to this are, and this face similar kind of challenges. They have hurdles, one step forward, two step backwards. For folks like them, uh, with your experience of setting up German cricket, what would be your recommendation to overcome these hurdles? The first thing is I didn't set up German cricket. There were a lot of people who did a lot of work and a lot of good work before I became the CEO. And there are still a lot of people who are doing an incredible amount of work. So it's not about me here. Um, but in terms of those hurdles, I think you have to have a very thick skin and to realize that if you are in a position of authority within a sports federation, you're doing a job which is very attractive to other people and um, is a privilege, you know, and it's a lot of fun. I go to work every day with a feeling of fun because I'm doing something that I really enjoy and to know that it's a privilege. Um, dealing with it is, is, is trying to um, obviously switch off, which is not easy when you're a cricket fan. So when I'm on holiday, I'm reading cricket books on the beach. You know, I must be crazy, but I do that because I love cricket so much. Um, but try and switch off from the problems. One thing I'm learning to do is to not check my mobile phone all day. It used to be the first thing I did in the morning, look at my emails. And then, you know, you have to, you have to find downtime and, and find time away from, from cricket. Again, it's a big challenge. And I think that's the same in any job. You can't be 24 hours on one topic. Switched on. Yeah. So family is very important. Uh, holiday is important. Uh, weekends are very important. Um, you know, to get away from, 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 from all of the problems that you have to deal with on a daily basis. You know? The other thing I think is to try yeah. and teach, try and treat people with respect. Um, mm -hmm. and, and obviously to, to be aware of the, of the privileged position that we find ourselves in being paid to be involved in cricket and realize that there are people out there 
who um, are doing this, doing the similar similar things to what I do, and they're not getting paid. They've got jobs as engineers or postmen or taxi drivers, and then in their free time, they're spending time trying to develop cricket as well and to respect it, um, and not to try or not to take the the difficult situations too seriously. So there's a lot of I think in every sports organization, there's a lot of politics. There's a lot of people who who make things difficult and try, even though it's very difficult, not to take it too seriously. Not to take things seriously, even in difficult situations. So we are continuing to talk with Brian Mantle, the CEO of Fadoish Cricket Club. We'll continue our conversation. Before that, we slip into this section called as the power of three round. Three things on Brian's bucket list. I want to go to South Africa to see England playing in Cape Town. Boxing Day test. Well, yes, if it is the Boxing Day test. I mean, I I went to Australia to see the Ashes four years ago, uh, which was absolutely fantastic. But I want to go to Cape Town. Mm-hmm. I want to, I want to eat biryani in India or Pakistan or maybe both because I'm a very big fan of biryani. You cannot enjoy German cricket if you don't like biryani. So wherever I go in Germany, the clubs are always trying to make the best biryani. And if anybody's listening, so far the best biryani in Germany is in Frankfurt. And um, and another bucket list. Um, oof, I want a German cricket team to qualify for a World Cup before I die. Next. We're not going to qualify in the next four or five years. But maybe in 10 years or 15 years or 20 years, it's, it's, it's realistic that you could see Germany at a Cricket World Cup, either our women's team or our men's team. One of them at a World Cup. Last year, we played, both of our teams played against Ireland. So a full member of the ICC. It would be great to see Germany playing, playing against England or South Africa or, or India and uh, maybe give them a good game. Super. Three best advice received on your journey of building Dosh Cricket Club. Yeah, I think I've touched on this already. I think it is to have a long-term perspective. And secondly, to realize how important sport is to a lot of people um, and not just get cut up, you know, involved in the, in the daily work, but also see the big perspective of how important and to appreciate how important sport is for some people. And... um the third one is to is to not take things too seriously. Three individuals that you would like to have on the board of German Cricket Club. Well, if we're thinking from a cricket perspective, I think that uh, Kumar Sangakara is one of, if not the most impressive individual in in world cricket. I think um, the way that he he presents himself, his intelligence and his thought about the game and his big picture concept of, of world cricket. Uh, I think he's a very, very uh, impressive individual. I mean, he was a wonderful cricket player, of course. Um, but I think as an administrator going forward, I hope that he gives back to the game because every time I listen to him commentating on the game or talking about the game, I'm, I'm very impressed by him. Then um, Ben Stokes. As an Englishman, obviously, I'm a big fan of Ben Stokes. And I think we need a little bit more of his winning mentality. I, w- I was lucky to be at the World Cup final at Lords in 2019 when England won the World Cup. And the reality is England won the World Cup because this guy saw something that other people didn't see. I mean, the game was over. New Zealand won that game, but but he never gave up. And in the end, England won the World Cup. And I think a little bit of that winning mentality would, would be excellent. And uh, a third person to come onto the DCB board. I don't know him, but the former CEO of the German bank, the Deutsche Bank, was a an Indian guy called Andrew Jain. I don't know what he's doing these days, but one of the biggest German banks was run by an Indian, and maybe his financial knowledge would be good for German cricket. And those are some wonderful names, wonderful list. If Andrew Jain is listening to this podcast, I'm sure uh, he will take up his phone and give you a call. And maybe Ben Stokes as well. Yeah. But I think Ben Stokes has got other things to do now as the captain of England. <laughs> Cool. Three routines of Brian as CEO of the German Cricket Club. Three routines that you follow. Um, a cup of coffee in the morning, because without a cup of coffee, and only one cup of coffee early in the morning. Um, and 
I'm not a really a routine person, to be honest. You say three routines, I, I really struggled for this because um, I deal with every day differently and every day is very different uh, in my job. Um, so I'm not really a routine person. Everybody is different. But Most of the routines I have are in my private life, around my private life. You know, get up early. I have to take my children to school because my children, well, every German kid has to go to school early in the morning, get into the office, check my emails, plan my day. I, I work very much with mind maps. So I did it this morning. So I basically came in and on a piece of paper, I've written down the mind on the mind map all of the things that I have to do this week or this day. It gives me, it, it helps me calm down because I realize what the tasks are. I can also think about what the priorities are today. Um, and some of those tasks I can say, okay, on a busy day, I won't do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. Um, I also like to try and keep my emails under, under control because if I don't, look at my emails for a few hours, suddenly I could be looking at 300 or 400 emails and I don't know where to start. So I try to answer emails quickly if I can and keep it under a manageable amount. Otherwise, things can get out of control quite quickly. Nice. That's a good set of practices out there. So the last of all of three round question here, Brian. Three best places to watch cricket in Europe. In Europe? Well, I'll, I'll start with... Lords. It's in Europe. I know it's a cricket playing country, but Lords is the most beautiful place, not just the, the most beautiful cricket ground, but the most beautiful place on this planet. The only place I've been which is comparable is Adelaide, the Adelaide Oval, which, it, which is not in Europe. It's in Australia, I know. But Lords is beautiful because every time you're there, you can feel the history. You can almost feel Donald Bradman walking down the steps to go into bat 70 or 80 years ago. You can feel the history. And I love Lords and I love the atmosphere there. But if you come onto the continent, um, I would say our friends at Desert Springs in Spain. Desert Springs is uh, in the, in the south of Spain. It's a beautiful ground, which has been built by a lot of investors. Uh, Joe Root was involved or Joe Root's family was involved in building this ground. And we go there every year. We're going there later in the year with our men's team. And it is fantastic. The weather is fantastic. The hospitality is fantastic. Um, and the facilities are excellent. But the one place I would say in Germany um, is the Olympic Stadium in Berlin. Um, the Olympic Stadium was built in for the Olympics in 1936. And behind the Olympic Stadium is it's called the Maifeld which is a huge area which was used for equestrian sports in the Olympics. And it's now two cricket grounds um, next to each other. Beautiful location, lots of history, iconic in many ways. Um, and anybody who is in Berlin, which of course is our capital city, should go in the summer months and watch cricket there because it's I've never seen anything like it. It's a beautiful place. The grass is a little bit, sh a little bit long. What we need to do is to get German greenkeepers to realise that cricket is a game played on really, really short grass. They don't really understand that, but it's a beautiful location. Great. So earlier on, the Brian, we did speak about the influence of immigrants into the German cricket team and how they are playing a major role in creating uh, that kind of a setup. My question here is, what has been the effect of the cultural set up the cultural nuances of building a team with such a diverse group of individuals that is available for you? How does culture play a role, part here? Well, the, the first thing I would say is regarding immigration. Cricket can only grow through immigration, through people moving from one part of the world to another. And the reason why Indians play cricket, if you think about it, is because during the colonial times, English people came to India and we brought our sport to India. And I know there was uh, maybe not so good memories on some of this, you know, colonial things, but cricket was imported by English people into India and to Pakistan and Bangladesh and Sri Lanka and so on. Now it is Asian people. So Indian people, Pakistani people and Afghan people who are re-importing it back to Europe. So without immigration, a sport cannot grow. You can't just go to a population and say, we want you to play a new sport without having that passion already there. 
So we embrace this immigration and we know that our sport will only flourish through immigration. And it's these people who are going to make German people enthusiastic about cricket over the next 20, 30, 40 years. And it's very clear to know that. Um, in terms of the, the mix, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I played cricket in Germany for the first time in 1998. And um, I played a lot in England, club cricket in England. I moved as a young man to Germany. My wife said, come on, you love cricket, go and play cricket. So I went and played and I was playing in a team. There was a couple of guys from New Zealand. There was a couple of guys from England. There were some Sri Lankans, there were some Indians and there were some Pakistanis. And we played together. We shared food. Sometimes an English guy would bring English food. More often than not, it was a biryani and it was an Indian dish or a Pakistani dish eating food, sharing with each other, it breaks barriers down. You know, I had not had much contact to people, for example, from, from Asia before that. Um, and then you spend time, you become teammates, all because you have a common love of a sport. Brings people together. It brings, and the one thing that I think is, is, is really fantastic about cricket in Germany and other countries as well, is Indian people playing with Pakistani people. We're all aware of the political issues. We're all aware that India and Pakistan don't play each other outside of ICC events. But on a cricket field in Germany, you don't know who an Indian person is and you don't know who a Pakistani person is. They become friends. We have two guys in our national team. One of them has a background in India and one of them has a background in Pakistan. They are best friends. You know, they've come together. It breaks down barriers. It breaks down cliches. Um, and it's, it's a fantastic atmosphere. It doesn't always work like that. Of course, you know, there's some bad people out there as well, but generally it brings people together and it's real integration, people taking on other concepts, other ideas, other cultures. And I'll just give you one example. I was invited by a Sri Lankan guy about 20 years ago. My, my wife and my, uh, me, we were invited to a, uh, a baptism of a of this guy's baby and i knew him i played cricket with him for two or three years and he was from sri lanka and he invited us to the baptism and i said to my wife while we were driving i said i don't know what religion this guy is he could have been from sri lanka he could be a hindu he could be buddhist he could be muslim he could be christian he could be anything and we were traveling without knowing what this guy's religion was and it was a, he was a catholic he was a, a christian it was a christian ceremony um but I played with this guy for three years, was a, a cricket friend of his. And that's where our friendship ended, really, was on the cricket field. But I had never asked myself what religion this guy has or anything like that. It was just his name was Benedict, which I should have known because that's a very Christian name that he was Christian. But I never thought about it. That's what cricket does. It breaks down the barriers. It's not important if you're a Hindu, a Sikh, a Muslim. It doesn't matter. We're playing cricket on the field. And... That's, it's, it's a wonderful message, I think. Yeah, it's a fantastic story and a great message. And to a large extent, this play, plays out into the culture and the social fabric of the country as well, right? How games can unite, how games can define the social fabric. That's what sport does. I mean, sport is, is, is it brings so many advantages other than just the sport. You know, it breaks down cultural barriers. It keeps people fit. It's good for people's mental health gets people out into the fresh air. Um, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, I don't think I would be happy working for a finance company or a bank or something like that anymore because sport, you know, actually does help people. So Brian, this has been fantastic conversation to know about what you and your team have been doing to take cricket to Germany. As CEO of German Cricket Club, what gives you sleepless nights? Um, finances. Finances means, you know, the resources and how are we going to achieve our targets with, with, with limited resources. Um, the other side of the coin is obviously politics. You know, some people take this a little bit too seriously. They don't see the whole picture. So sometimes, you know, we're trying to bring people together. That's very, very difficult, complicated people because there's a lot of them out there. But uh, to be honest, the one thing I can do is I, I sleep very well at night. I have a lot of stress in my job. But I don't have sleepless nights. I, I hit the, the 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 pillow and I sleep like a baby. 
My problem is getting up in the morning. <laughs> that that's your antidote to manage to say good night sleep. Um, yeah, sleepless night. And of course, this is Germany, and in Germany, um, especially in the part of Germany where I where I live, you finish the working day and you go and have a beer. One beer, only one beer, not much. Never get drunk, but one beer. Sit outside. The weather is sometimes nice in Germany, and sit outside in the garden and have a beer. Put your feet up, and probably because I'm a little bit crazy, watch a game of cricket. <laughs> Wonderful, Bran. This show is all about inspiration. Definitely, through your experience, you have been an inspiration for all of us listening out here. What is your inspire someone today message for all the listeners? Um, I would just say, try and help people. Try and help people because if you do help people, you get a lot back. It's not all about how much money you earn or your status or your job title. I know these things are important for everybody, but it's also a feeling about helping people and getting a lot back. And um, and also, don't work too hard. Don't forget your families. Don't forget your friends. Um, especially if you get very passionate about a job, you can sometimes um, forget that there are more important things. Somebody once said to me that if you work in a company and one day one day you drop dead, next week there will be a funeral and your colleagues will come to the funeral and they will be very sad. Maybe they will shed a tear. But next week there will be a new person doing your job. Your colleagues will never go to your grave, but your family will go to your grave. On the anniversary of your death, your family will shed a tear and they'll say, wasn't he a nice guy? And it's so sad he's no longer with us. But your colleagues will never do that. They might say, oh, he was a nice guy, but they'll never visit your grave. It will be your family who visit your grave and put flowers there. They will be the ones who are sad about you no longer being there. And never forget that a job is only a job. Although I will say, if it's a job like cricket, it's very, very difficult to remember that every day. Well, Brian, on that profound note, profound message, I take this opportunity to thank you for coming on the show, sharing your experience and journey of uh, what you are building for German cricket. I wish you the very best and wish you the very best and look forward to have German cricket represent in ICC tournaments in the short term it itself, not wait for the next 15, 20 years. I have a question for you, Shrikant, before we go. I mean, after today, if Germany were to play India, who would you want to win? <laughs> you have to say Germany now. I, I, I think it's it's all about pushing the underdogs. So I would go with Germany so that we That's a good answer. We will go with Germany because we want more cricketing nations to play. And that's the only way they will play is when they kind of they feel motivated by defeating the big boys. Yeah, you're totally right. And I will support India if they play football against Germany. There you go. Thank you for listening into today's edition of Inspire Someone Today. It's been a privilege to bring in these conversations. If you like this episode and have any feedback or comments, do mail me at Inspire Someone Today Podcast at the rate gmail.com. Inspiring someone is like creating ripples around us. If you like what you listen, feel free to share them and let's create ripples of inspiration. Do not forget to follow me on my Instagram handle at the rate Inspire Someone Today podcast for all the latest updates. This is Srikanth, your host, signing off. And until next time, keep inspiring.